guys, and welcome back to another Innocent Modeler. Before I get started in this video, which I made back in June, I wanted to insert a little announcement here. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know that I am building out a new workstation in my garage. Uh, this station has been here now for 20 years. That's how long we've been in this house. It's amazing how fast time has flown by. Um, it seemed like the logical place to put it. Uh, this is the way it kind of was arranged in the previous house we were at. Um, but it is a bit of a tight fit when the cars are in here, so I always have to move out the cars. Uh, but uh, we're going to relocate it to the front end of the garage, which uh, had storage cabinets there, but they were falling apart. And we figured, you know what, uh, why don't we just kind of reconfigure everything here and make this side the storage area and that the workbench area. So uh, let me take a second to show you the progress. So here's the front section of my garage that has been cleared away for the workspace. So the work surface is made from butcher block and will be configured in an L shape. The spray station and 3D printer will be placed on the left hand side. Additional workspace on the right will be provided by a movable work table that will be also adjustable in height, allowing it to be slid underneath the workbench when not in use. It's on wheels too, so I can also move around as needed. The strip of outlets will be placed along the back wall, along with pegboard, and above, as you can see, are some storage shelves. All right, so I'm gonna go on a little bit of a hiatus from the channel in order to get everything packed up here, moved over there uh, once that is built out. And uh, in the meantime, what I'm doing is uh, finishing up a 3D printed project. I wanted to share this with you real quickly. This is Ang from The Last Airbender. This is a file you can find on Thingiverse. And uh, The Last Airbender is something I've just recently got into. I've known about it for some time. It's a show that was in the early 2000s on Nickelodeon. I used to watch a few episodes here and there with my kids, but never really got into it because it was hard to watch anything in sequence since it was broadcast that way. But now that it's on Netflix, you can stream the entire series, and I would highly recommend it. And if you love animation, uh, you'll love this show. Um, and uh, so what I've got in line for the channel for next month is Ken Spriggs and I are going to do a buddy build, actually, of the Predator ship from Blackheart. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, then, of course, I've got a bunch of other things planned to hopefully try to squeeze in uh, before the end of the year. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the video. In the video, real briefly here, I'll explain a bit further here in the introduction, but it's about my workflow currently uh, with 3D printing. Uh, I've been asked about this uh, a number of times, so I wanted to kind of make something from the perspective of a newbie, because I consider myself very much a newbie at this, of course. I only started a few months ago, uh, but um, yeah, I thought I would just share uh, what I'm currently doing with that. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Initiative Modeler. Uh, recently, I've had a number of people ask me about 3D printing, and particularly the process I go through or my workflow when it comes to producing a 3D print. Uh, these uh, guys are interested in making the jump into uh, 3D printing, but are a little bit unsure about it and just wanted to know some more specifics about the process. So I thought I would uh, put this video together showing you that. The steps are pretty straightforward and simple. Hopefully you'll find this useful as well. So first of all, again, I use an Elegoo Mars printer. Uh, this model runs under $300 and uh, has really worked well for me. Uh, Elegoo has recently released a mid-size printer, uh, so it's larger than this one. It's called the Elegoo Saturn. Now the first step is prepping your file for printing, which requires pulling it up in a program like Cheetobox, which I'm using here. This will allow you to size it, position it, and add what are called supports, and all of this is necessary for achieving a successful print. This will be part of the process with the steepest learning curve, as it takes time to get a handle on how to do this. Now, rather than going into any detail here, I'll post links down below to some good YouTube tutorials you can use to get started. Next, you place a clean resin vat into your printer, secure it, pour the resin, and slip on the cover. You go to your menu window, select the print, and the process starts. Once it gets going, it'll tell you the estimated time for print. So because I use my workbench for this and space is limited, I place inexpensive table covers over the area and inside this kitty litter container so that I can catch any potential spills. You can use a variety of containers to wash and clean your pieces. I refer to the videos listed in the description for details covering supplies. Since I'm using water washable resin here, these containers are filled with water. Okay, well let's get to the print. I found that this tool, called a safety scraper, to be useful for detaching the print from the bill plate. It's easier than using the spatula that came with my printer. Its head has a tapered front end, which makes it easier to slide underneath the edge of the print. You could also carefully use a box cutter blade to do the same. Once the piece is off the bill plate, I give it two washes, lightly using a brush to help clear away resin on the surface. Next, I snip away the supports, which I find easier to do before curing. 
The print is then placed into this container with water, and when using daylight to cure the resin, I place it out in the sunlight for about 15 to 20 minutes, making sure all sides are exposed. And if not curing in daylight, I use this UV lamp and scratch built box to place it in as a substitute. When it's time to clean the bill plate, this easily can be done by dipping it into fresh water, again if you're using water washable resin. The same thing needs to be done with the resin vat, and even though I am using water washable, I do find that IPA alcohol helps to finish the job. Alright, so what I wanted to do here was again make this video more about workflow, so I'm not going to mention too much more about this sort of stuff here. I'd advise that you check out the videos I provided links to below because they'll go into much more detail about this stuff. But I thought I would give you a brief overview of some of the other accessories you might find useful. Now first of all, this is a spatula that is included with the printer, and this is what they suggest that you use to take off the print from the bill plate. The front has this tapered edge which you're supposed to slip underneath the print. What I find the best thing to do is to place it or wedge it underneath your print and gently use a rubber hammer at the butt of the spatula to tap and wedge the spatula underneath that print so that it eventually pops off. And you just have to be careful not to really scratch over your bill plate too much. However, um, you can use instead these box cutter cutters as I alluded to earlier. This is uh, a recommendation I found from another person on YouTube and um, this is very thin obviously so it will easily slide into that space and then you can wedge your um, your spatula in there creating more of, a, of an opportunity to get it in there so that you can free up that print. Uh, I just felt a bit nervous working with these blades. I didn't want to cut myself, so as soon as someone had suggested this tool, I went on Amazon to find it. It's about 11 bucks, but as you can see, it's got this tapered edge here as well, and it looks like a razor blade. It's just made of plastic. Um, these rubber squeegees here, you can make using just a cheapy uh, spatula you can find at the Dollar Tree. You can see I have room to cut even more. Uh, these are useful, especially when you're cleaning your vat and you're trying to uh, conserve material because you want to save some of that resin that's not used. You can use this squeegee, uh, clean your vat uh, so that can drip into a cup and you can pour it back into your uh, container. So uh, you can find rubber squeegees like this. Um, 3D Print Farm is another YouTube channel and he's listed a link where you can buy already pre-cut rubber squeegees, but they last a long time, especially if you clean them off here. So um, I found this is cheap and easy to use and to get a hold of. Um, let's talk about an ultrasonic cleaner real quick. Um, I've been using the water washable resin uh, lately particularly because uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol is difficult to find as you well know. Uh, it's kind of spotty as to what's out there. 90% is the one that's recommended and I find that is the best cleaner for a regular resin. I've tried the other cleaners that people have experimented with including LA Awesome I think is one degreaser. Another one's called Mean Green. They work okay, but I found that uh, the pieces were still kind of gummy afterwards. So um, this is something you can use to help work free uh, all of that resin as a final wash. Lastly, uh, you can see this glass cleaner here. This is an alcohol-based uh, spray that's for glass, but it is very useful to help clean off that bill plate. Um, it's gentle on the bill plate, and in combination with these microfiber cloths, it's a great way to clean that off, as well as your resin vat. That resin vat has that clear fat, fat film um, that you don't want to scratch, and this is the best way to clean that off. Uh, along with this stuff as well. And as I mentioned there, alcohol is useful regardless what uh, resin you're using to help finish off the job when you're cleaning off that uh, or cleaning up your resin vat. Now one other thing I know I went quickly through so I just wanted to show you this again is the UV lamp that I got on Amazon for about 29 bucks and uh, it does not come with any sort of container for your piece so I made this one out of foam board, white foam board and reflective uh, duct tape and it's large enough to fit over anything that I've printed so far. Uh, I just put this over the piece and then uh, put the lamp on it and uh, so it shields everything else from the UV light that's being used here. And lastly, and I first want to give credit to where credit is definitely due, and that is to the gentleman at 3D Print Farm. Um, he came up with an idea on how to cure resin in hollow prints. Uh, to save material, you can use your software to hollow out the print and uh, you create these drainage holes so that the resin drains out. And uh, ideally what will happen is if you put the uh, piece into your washes, it's supposed to clean everything out. However, that doesn't always happen, and if there's excess resin that's in there and it dries, it can crack your print. Believe me, that has happened. Um, at least to me, anyway. So uh, what you can do is you can create a UV light that you can snake into your print, and I would, again, advise you to check out 3D Print Farm's um, video on this, but you can buy these 
little UV LEDs on Amazon for about seven bucks you get, I think it's like a hundred of them, and you also get the resistors that are necessary for it. And all you do is you take uh, your wire and you wire this up to a, uh, to a battery connector, like a nine volt battery, and then you can create this long piece with this at the tip and you can slide this into your hollowed out print. I just haven't made one yet, but it's very easy to do. And um, just let it sit inside there while it cures the resin. I think that's an excellent, excellent idea. So again, check out that video. Uh, it's uh, very easy to make them. Okay, a few other things to touch base on. The first I want to expand a little bit about what I've learned with the types of resins that are out there. First of all, there are a lot of different brands available and they vary in price. Um, it's easy to be drawn to the less expensive price as you, as you uh, browse through uh, Amazon or whatever source you're getting your resins from. But just make sure that you uh, do a little research about the materials so that uh, maybe visit some of the forums and the uh, Facebook pages to kind of see what people have to say about those so that you can have um, you know, good successful prints. Uh, a lot of them can vary a little bit in the settings that you have to input into your printer, so just be aware of that uh, so that your prints can come out and come out well. Uh, water washable versus regular resin. Elegoo is the only one that makes the water washable that I'm aware of, and uh, so that's what, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, what I've been working mainly with. And I think the biggest convenience, at least the main reason that people work with it is the fact that it is water washable. You know, it's, uh, you're not having to buy any of these other, or work with any of these other chemicals, so it just makes it easier uh, to handle. Um, it is more expensive, however, if you're not having to buy any of these other cleaners, that may all even out in the end. My recommendation is just to try them out, see which works wet best for you. The one thing about water washable is that uh, as you do some reading, you're gonna find that uh, a lot of people, there are a number of people out there who just don't like it. Uh, they've had bad experiences with it or just uh, have had some issues. Um, I have found, however, if you just change the exposure setting, which is really what's worked for me, my friend Omar, who exclusively uses water washable resin pretty much for all his prints, told me that's really all you needed to do is make sure and, and that you're giving it enough curing time that you won't have any issues. And ever since I did that, I've not had any major problems with it. Uh, when I first started using water washable, I had problems with cracking and warping, but it turns out I just wasn't exposing the resin long enough. Uh, but ever since making that change, I haven't had any issues. But like I said, I would just recommend trying them out to see what works best for you. But next I want to talk about safety. Uh, now one of the things that kept me from jumping into 3D printing right away is the word toxic because I kept running across all kinds of posts telling you how toxic liquid resin is. And uh, so I, I did some reading, I tried to do some research, try to find out more information about this material uh, so that I could make the right decisions with regard to the uh, safety equipment that I need to do to acquire. Um, What's interesting is since then I have found that there's some varying opinion as to how toxic this material is. Some people who are uh, chemists, I've seen posts on some forums and on YouTube channels. I've seen people who claim they work in the industry with the, uh, work with chemicals all the time and toxic materials. They say this stuff is not as bad as people have made it out to be. However, currently what I'm doing is I'm just taking um, all the precautions that I think for me make me comfortable and the first is using a mask. So I use a mask with a respirator. Um, I work in my garage and you, you'd imagine that after opening the door, the air would circulate in here uh, pretty well. And it does, but you know, when I first take off the hood um, and say I'm pouring the resin in, I feel like there's this cloud of vapor that's sitting right there and I just don't want to breathe that stuff in. So uh, for now, that's what I'm doing is anytime I'm working directly with the material lifting off the hood and that sort of stuff, um, I'm putting on this mask. And make sure if you get one of these that you find one that's comfortable, uh, pay a little bit more money for it because uh, you know these filters are the only thing you need to replace. The mask itself is very reusable, obviously. Um, I, I first got one from Harbor Freight and the, the, the rubber was uh, stiffer and it was just a bit more uncomfortable to wear, but uh, this one actually, uh, from 3M is pretty good and I found this at Home Depot. Next are gloves and nitrile is the material that's been recommended uh, versus latex and uh, some people don't use any gloves at all. Um, you know, I think if you're going to be working with this stuff, it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable precaution to use gloves. Um, and certainly when you're rinsing the material too, uh, you're, you know, you're working with other types of chemicals too that could be irritating to your skin. I've always had problems with sensitivities and that's why even when I'm working with acrylics and doing my painting and 
uh, cleaning airbrushes and stuff, you'll see that I, I've always used nitrile gloves because I've always had an issue with that stuff. So, uh, And then lastly, eye protection. Making sure that you're protecting those eyes um, when you're pouring the material. There's always a, a chance that something could splash up at you. Uh, but also, you know, when you're cutting those supports off, they do tend to fly off sometimes. And the last thing you want is something at high velocity flying at your eye, right? So just make sure you're using eye protection. Um, the other thing I want to mention are my favorite um, uh, YouTube channels. Uh, one is uh, Uncle Jesse, and this is a guy who has a wealth of knowledge about 3D printing in general. He tests out products. He's been doing it for quite a while. He uh, gives really clear uh, and easy to understand explanations, so I'd highly recommend him. Uh, 3D Printing Pro, uh, he's all about supports. Uh, he's a whiz at uh, designing supports for his print, and that's important to really learn how to do eventually, and I'm still in the process of doing that. As I mentioned earlier in the video, that's probably the steepest part of the learning curve in all of this, um, is how to position your print and put those supports on so that you can have a successful print, and also print that is fairly clean, because the auto function in these programs uh, these slicing programs usually recommend the heaviest supports, you know, and they work. But the problem is that when you're taking these supports off, it can leave a lot of surface imperfections that you have to end up filling in. So I'm still learning this process, but 3D Printing Pro has got some great uh, ways to apply some of the um, lighter weight supports that give you a print that uh, in the end you won't have to really do much with except to clean it off. So, and then the other one is 3D Print Farm. Um, he's got a, a lot of knowledge there as well. Um, he uh, is easy to understand. He's the one who came up with that whole idea, as I mentioned, with the, uh, the uh, little light that you snake into hollow print. So a lot of good information on his channel as well, so I'd highly recommend him also. And then there's one called Akuma Mods. Uh, he's the guy who recommended the safety scraper, and uh, he's got some other information on his channel as well that I think you'll find helpful. And lastly, yep, this is a Star Wars apron. Uh, I used to use it for barbecuing. It's been sitting up in a drawer upstairs for for a long time. I actually have another one that I use for barbecuing that someone gave me with a uh, pocket to hold a beer in, which is really important when you're barbecuing. So uh, it's been nice to have it here at the work uh, bench here just to uh, protect myself against splashes and stuff and to have extra pockets. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, my goal here was to give you some information from the point of view of someone who's just gotten started with this. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments, of course, here on the YouTube channel. Um, I know I'm going to streamline this whole process as I go along and learn more, but it's been really a lot of fun, and I look forward to doing more 3D printing. And uh, I foresee myself getting more into figure painting as well, as there's so much available out there. But also, I've already seen people printing models uh, with 3D printing, so I look forward to that as well. All right, thanks a lot, you guys, and I promise the next video will be about a project that I'm working on. Take care, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.